what is up everyone and welcome back to the channel welcome to a weekend a very sunny weekend it's almost 25 degrees outside summer is definitely on its way and today i got a couple of errands to run and i got to run them with yep the 350e is back on the channel i know what you're thinking no it's not mine yet but more on that maybe later Anyway, so I got the 350e back. I'm actually pulling. I'm actually putting a lot of kilometers uh, on it. It's very close to the end of its braking service. And just a couple of things I wanted to point out before we get on the road, because I, I have a couple of errands to run around the city. Uh, first of all, some of you may know. Let's put the ignition on. The 350e has some blue lights here. Uh, these blue lights are uh, illegal in Europe because you are not allowed to have blue lights on the front of any vehicle because that would be the police. But I thought that maybe Zontes had, had uh, deactivated them in the software. I didn't check online or anything. What I did find was that if we look underneath here, this little pink and green plug on European models European spec 350e's this is unplugged and this is the plug for the lights you'll find this plug underneath the front fairing underneath the lights and all you have to do is uh, connect that light now I do not recommend on doing it because that is illegal but yeah, if you're, uh, I don't know, on a dirt road where uh, you're not on the main road and you can't have blue lights on the front of a vehicle, then uh, yeah, this thing, these things look absolutely awesome, especially at night. I have a couple of pictures on uh, Instagram with them at night. Again, not on the road, private property. But yeah, I'm going to get on it and uh, let's go run some errands with this thing. I think the military is out to get me. Or what is that? <sighs> it's the first. Again, summer is fast approaching. The sun is nice and burning. It's 23 degrees outside. And it's only the end of what is 30th, 30th of March. So we're still two months into spring, but this is gonna be a very warm weekend. Let's fire this baby up. As you can see, we already have 858 kilometers on the bike. Most of them done by me, a couple done by customers who took it out on test rides, but I think only like 50 or 60 kilometers were done on test rides. All the rest were by me. And I have to admit, I am getting quite used to the machine. It is a bit of a whale through traffic, but I am actually getting quite used to the way it handles and uh, its size. And I can, st I've, I've started threading it through a couple of narrow places and uh, yeah, you can get around the city with this thing, even though it's a little bit wide and it's a little bit big. <laughs> but before we get properly on the road, first on the list, I have to get some vegetables because before I forget, because I was supposed to get them earlier, but I forgot. So now I'm going to go get them now and then run my errands through the city. Let's pull over here. Find ourselves a parking spot. There we go. Nice little parking spot. Nice part about it being keyless. That's it. I'm out. And vegetables acquired. Again, nice part with the keyless system. Just come up to it, open it up. As long as it has battery, it works beautifully. I'm just scared about not having battery. Now, also what I want to try out, put the ignition on, is what some of you have written down in my comments about uh, the Zontes' display. Because yes, it does have some kind of uh, connectivity with your phone. So we're going to go into settings, connections. I do have my Carbit Ride app. 
like I've said in previous videos I do not like using this app come on as you can see it's much more sluggish than uh, your regular uh, Android Auto okay now it's connected and I want to go into navigation we'll use this navigation okay one problem with this app that I have seen hopefully you can see if I go into my account it says I have online navigation VIP 176 days remember uh, remaining this was three uh, this was free with the scooter when I or actually with the account I have off-road and group VIP have not yet paid okay I want to pay and also I want to extend my online navigation I cannot pay it and once this expires I will not be able to be using this anymore so I will have to go back to mirror imaging which means my phone screen has to remain on even if I put the phone inside so I can see it up here but not only that let's see we are going to let's see if it searches Maramura because this is not Google all right but no I do not want that one uh, no yeah I'm looking for uh, a certain restaurant restaurant but uh, let's search for the building one city Floresca nope I'm gonna go into Google Maps let's get the full address so Floresca 159 165 let's put that in the app You see how much uh, of a pain it is compared to Google? Okay. All right. It seems to have given me the proper 27 minutes, 12.7 kilometers. Go. And now the navigation is on the screen. I can turn off my phone screen. And, uh, okay. I'm not seeing my, it says turn right. So, okay, we're going to follow the instructions to turn right. And uh, we'll see how far we get. So yeah, now like a lot of people suggested, I have my navigation on my big 7-inch TFT. It does have turn-by-turn -turn navigation in my Cardo headset, but uh, it's a little bit repetitive, let's say. But yeah, at least it has it. It has it. But currently it's not updating my map and it's just tell me in 50 meters turn right so that's a little bit less than 50 meters but okay okay it's a little bit crowded around here i was expecting my map to be updated but all right i see nothing yet now i know how to get to my destination without navigation but uh, i want to try it out okay so you see the indications up here are updating but the map itself is not updating so like I've said, this app is extremely glitchy. The Carbit Ride app is extremely, extremely glitchy, and I do not like it. Yeah, it's not updating. Okay, we are going to switch to Google Maps in just a little bit when I can pull over. We are going to switch to Google Maps and mirror imaging of the phone screen. That does mean I have to keep my phone screen on in the glove box, but it is what it is you lock the orientation of the screen so it uh, locks in landscape and uh, it's basically like having your phone on your handlebar but you can actually use the touch screen so even that is a little bit jankier like i've said i would have liked proper android auto on this screen just proper integration with android auto would have been absolutely pitch perfect uh, for this scooter yeah so the indications here are updating the screen isn't all right let's pull over let's pull it over here and let us switch to some android all right 
And now the second part of the faff begins. Back. Mirror projection. Start now. It is projecting my screen. All right. Let's put directions. Okay. So start. I have to turn the phone around. Now we have to lock the orientation. I cannot switch off my phone screen. And also I want to turn on some music because before I forget. All right. Back to full screen. So now it's mirror imaging my phone. I can put my phone here. And now we have proper Google. But again, it's a lot of faff and I my phone now is doing navigation with the screen on in an unventilated pocket. So my phone slowly but surely it's is going to get very 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 hot. So if you're going to use your phone with the screen on and using the entire battery to navigate why not just have it up here so uh, it can get some ventilation and not destroy your battery from getting too hot i don't know I, i'm currently been using the mirror imaging function for now because i do not have a phone mount for this machine yet but at the moment it's kind of pointless i have two screens showing the same thing and another thing i do not like with this uh, as it sits i only have my speed my rpm my voltage my fuel level which is showing i need fuel so we're gonna stop for fuel and my water temperature gauge i cannot check my tire pressure i cannot check my range i cannot check anything because the way you do it if you press on here we go back to the main screen but if i'm moving and i want to go back to my navigation I can't because it doesn't allow me to go into the menus while I'm moving even long press no nothing so I'm gonna have to pull over I have to pull over get it down to zero set connections and now I'm back so every time I want to check out check my tire pressures or my fuel range or anything I basically have to stop so I can bring back my, my uh, mirror imaging of my phone back on the screen and that's the same thing even if you use their own carpet navigation app it's the same problem once you go out of the screen you cannot go back in it which is kind of stupid to say the least it's kind of stupid all right let's get some fuel into this thing oh Mm, this is gonna take a while All right, finally my turn to fuel up and again, we're gonna see a second problem of this entire system So I turn it off. I open my fuel and I switch off the scooter put in my parking brake and uh, Actually, I need my phone There we go All right, so now the screen is off, I can f fuel up and everything. Problem is, my phone just got disconnected from the specific app. And again, if I want to use my phone, turn back again on the auto rotation, and I want to put in my, uh, my fueling so I can get my fuel mileage. Let's see, fuel it up, put it on the center stand, I forgot about that part. 95 we're gonna go with 95 all right so we have a total of 862 kilometers we did 294 kilometers on this tank of fuel let's see how much fuel goes in it is it was pretty dry oh it's going in oh 12 liters okay that's amazing but actually well, i want to brim it because last time it was absolutely brimmed so we gotta compare apple. We gotta compare apples to apples. Okay, that's what I would call brimmed. Thirteen liters. Now, let's see the total fuel mileage, and when then I'm gonna 
give an opinion on the fuel economy on this last fuel tank so it's a uh, 13.01 with the total price of yeah 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 fuel is expensive 4.43 that's not bad at all that's really not bad sheesh that's some good fuel economy for what it's been going through the past 300 kilometers anyway let's pay all right now that i'm back at the scoot uh, first of all i want to turn it on i want to reset my trip meter god damn it no one behind me now we can sit here uh go to this screen reset my trip meter and uh now what i gotta do is uh, phone back on or actually no we gotta go into the put this into the connection no you can see the problem okay so now we gotta reconnect go to this reconnect connect come on no one behind me this is the kind of path you have to go through all right it's connected mirror projection start it's it is mirror projecting Put on the big navigation. Wait, turn it around. Lock the screen orientation. Get rid of this. Okay, we got it on the screen. Put this back in here. And uh, put my gloves on. How long was that? Three, four minutes to get my navigation back up and running. That's kind of a lot, and like I've said, it is a bit of a path with this uh, on-screen navigation. And again, now if I if I'm in a fuel station and uh, maybe I want to pump up my tires because uh, I don't know what what's my tire pressure. I cannot see, and if I see, I have to go out of the screen and then stop and then go back into the screen. So. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry if I'm not going to probably not going to be using this feature a lot in the future because it is a bit of a faff. And uh, hmm, I think both navigations are still running because I hear I know on Google I have turn by turn uh, turned off, but uh, I'm hearing the other navigation because even though I exited the navigation app, uh, I think it's still trying to take me to my destination. It's a bit of a faff. Not going to lie. It's a bit of a fath with all of this stuff. Android Auto should have been on here. It would have been a lot simpler. And uh, yeah, could have been on our way a lot simpler, a lot easier, a lot less troubles to get it going. But yeah, what about that fuel consumption? Four, four and a half liters per 100 kilometers. Now in the last 300 kilometers, this scooter has I've taken a little, little bit outside the city and then ridden a lot through the city and went on a couple of test rides. So it hasn't really been, I don't know, driven economically. So 4.4, I think 4.43 was the number. Liters per 100 kilometers. That is only one liter more than Donnie per 100 kilometers. Now that's something totally livable with less than five liters per 100 kilometers in the city for something of this size and of this power. That's a good number. That is a properly good number. And like I've said, I haven't been riding it economical and uh, neither have uh, the people that have taken it on test rides as you can probably imagine. You know, for the first time this year, I'm kind of warm in my helmet and I kind of need some ventilation. I do have my visor open, but it's almost not enough. So uh, what, I, what I've liked about this thing from day one is this. Oh, now I have I can close my visor and I can use my helmet vents to ventilate my head It is a little bit louder, but I'm getting cool air around my head Awesome, absolutely awesome and that's something hold on And that is something you can only do with an electrically adjustable screen and uh, not a lot of scoots have electrically adjustable screens, but I can adjust it on the fly in case I'm warm, in case I'm cold. And uh, like I've said, I've gotten a little bit more used to the size of the machine and I can filter it through traffic quite well. There we go, green! <laughs> the, 
the engine is definitely not as punchy as the M310 because I think it's more of the weight not the power but uh, it does get up and go it does get up and go look at all the people out and about enjoying their weekend it is quite a beautiful day to enjoy and all the kids on two wheels on bicycles yeah boys start them off young start them off young so they can enjoy a life of two-wheeled pleasure we got a hanger left here let's be a little bit cheeky there we go yeah boy you know considering it's the weekend the city of Bucharest does not let does not disappoint in terms of congestion it's uh what a, what time it is 20 minutes to one o'clock p.m and uh yeah we're stuck in traffic we're having to filter come on we're gonna quickly go back end broke loose a little bit but traction control i could bury the throttle and i let traction control do its thing that was nice that was nice back wheel did slide a little bit and immediately the the electronics rained the power in I hardly felt it, it hardly cut powers, but uh, it did its job. Whoa, hard on the brakes. Please. And come on. <laughs> Traffic here is weird, especially in the weekends. I can understand the phrase weekend driver or Sunday driver. There are a lot of people that don't drive during the weekend, take out the cars in the weekend and have no idea how to maneuver this chaotic traffic. Uh-oh, it's the fuzz. Shh. Quiet, boys. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Hope you're enjoying this ride along Bucharest. I don't have any kind of proper business today. I'm just out and about putting kilometers on the 350 so we can get it past its braking period okay thank you again maneuverable yes it's a big whale but once you get used to the size it is quite maneuverable and it has a certain flow to it a certain flow from left to right from right to left and what we got behind us a Bergman 400 Come on. There we go. Open up the taps, but not for long. Because we are still in the city. But you can get into a rhythm with it. Like I said, in, in the city you can get into a rhythm. At first I thought it was a little bit heavy, a little bit big for the city. Once you get accustomed to its size and you can measure distance between cars so that this thing would fit through and once you get accustomed to that then it's no longer a problem you can easily filter traffic with it the problem is when you go from a small scooter to something like this because you are not used to the size and this fairing huge fairing up front here is a little bit intimidating because it's a lot wider than on other scooters but then you remember the handlebars the handlebars are just as wide as any other scooter and the handlebars are the widest part of the scooter so uh it's really not that much more difficult to filter than uh, on a regular little scooter now if you are doing delivery work like i've said then yeah i would suggest something smaller what are you doing what's that guy doing uh, Okay. I think that car identifies as a pedestrian. Yeah. Yeah, I think that car identifies as a pedestrian. You know, what can you say? 2024. Not even gonna go into it. <laughs> So yeah, like I was saying, like let's what do we have here? We have a little Vespa or is it a not the Vespa clone? It's a Vespa clone. Anyway, if you do courier work like this guy, he's delivering Glovo. Yes, for him, 
something uh, that's as small as that thing is a lot better because every two minutes that he saves on a delivery is two minutes that can be added to the end of the day and at the end of the day he can do probably another two or three deliveries in the same time frame because he saved one or two minutes on each delivery but if you're just going to work in back and uh, really okay traffic here is kind of idiotic like I was saying if you're just going to work in back uh, like I've been doing for the past two weeks with this thing uh, honestly the difference between my uh, transit time to work and back between this and the symphony it's only something like a minute a minute and a half depending on how I what's my luck with the lights so two minutes a day really isn't that big of a deal but to be perfectly honest what you give up just going to work and back those extra two or three minutes both ways uh, per day you gain so much more in a scooter that's much more capable for the open road you can actually properly start planning very very long trips i mean i have i i really don't have a problem doing something like a thousand kilometers in a day on this thing and uh, i'm probably gonna do it probably after the braking period and once it gets a little bit warmer i am probably gonna try to do a full day of at least a thousand kilometers on it and uh, see exactly how it feels after 12 or 13 hours in the saddle because to be perfectly honest it feels absolutely awesome for the time i've been in the saddle it's extremely comfortable i have nothing to complain about it and I really hope you guys are enjoying this little trip around Bucharest with all the crazy traffic. I know you can probably see my speed that my speed down there and yes, 50 kilometers an hour is is the speed limit in Bucharest. <laughs> Or actually the speed suggestion in Bucharest because if you actually do 50 kilometers an hour constantly you're probably gonna have a car up your ass and as we can see whoa crazy people one changing lanes one pulling out I'm doing 61 and I'm getting undertaken it's crazy boys especially in the weekend it's crazy you really have to have your wits about you and once again let's see threading the needle what 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 whoa there we go <laughs> see once you get used to it you can actually filter quite aggressively with it and i'm actually not filtering aggressively right now uh, i can do much worse when the cameras are off but uh, again nothing to see here officer nothing to see here you have no proof it didn't happen let's see will he jaywalk will he jaywalk nope grandpa didn't jaywalk it's kind of a tradition here if you see the street uh, empty you throw yourself onto the road let's see what can we do here can we get up front yes we can eh, i don't want to get it dirty easy careful with opening doors ah we have a green light and the guy is sleeping power there we go <laughs> I love how he just pulled out. Oh, maybe that's what you, what your dad should have done. Yeah, traffic. Honestly, Romania is a nice country, but I would try avoiding Bucharest. Unless you really want to see it or unless you really want to try out this traffic. But uh, I would actually kind of uh, avoid Bucharest. The rest of the country is beautiful this is more of a working city we that we don't really have anything beautiful around here come on come on come on come on let's see let's see we're almost there we're almost there i want to buy i'm going to a sweet shop because i i really fancy a couple of eclairs <laughs> 
some nice eclairs it hard it's hard to refuse the the urge for an eclair it must be something to do with the cream the cream filling going up all inside of me i don't know red light red light wasn't fast enough hello Now, for everybody in case where they're wondering, we are in the Floresca area of Bucharest, which is the posh and expensive part of town. And as you can see, the women look like hobos, because as I understand it, that's how posh women are supposed to look nowadays. I don't know, I'm not into fashion. As you can probably tell, uh, fashion is not my forte. But anyway, let's see if, uh, I, if I can find some eclairs. Where should it be? Where should it be? Hey, 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 hey! Bloody hell, man! Let's see, we're searching for Maramura. It should be around these buildings. Let's see, we have it on the GPS. Can we get close to it with the scoot? That's kind of a test. Can we get close to it? Uh, I think I need to turn it around. And park it somewhere over there. And I think we're gonna park it <laughs> right up here. Come on. Parking brake, switched off. And I'm gonna turn it off and probably never use this bloody thing again in terms of navigation. So I did end up finding the shop. It was somewhere over there and it's called one of these Mara Mura. So if you're in Bucharest and boy do these ever look good. Now I did do I did take a couple of pictures inside. It's quite a quaint little shop. Prices are not expensive. I think it's three euros for an eclair and let's give it the old taste test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this thing isn't making it home. <laughs> I know a good eclair when I taste it. This is awesome. And only three euros. <laughs> anyway. Whoa! Check that out! How awesome are those? And they are many! <laughs> bunch, of, bunch of idiots having fun. I know you can rent these in groups. Come on, let's see them. Come on guys, punch it! Punch it boys! There they go! <laughs> anyway, how fun is that? How fun is that? That's what you get for just going around the city in on such a beautiful day. Everybody is out and about and having fun. And uh, with that in mind, let's put some more kilometers on this thing. Alrighty, let's get back on the road. And like I said, I'm not going to be using the screen for navigation because I know my way around the city. And I'm going to be doing something about getting a phone mount on this thing. Or maybe mount my CarPuRight system, my Android Auto system. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. But uh, if you do want to mount uh, a CarPuRight or buy yourself a CarPuRight, uh, affiliate link is down in the description below. And uh, the channel gets a bit of a kickback from your purchase at no extra cost to you. Back on the road, gonna enjoy the ride a little bit more about, I don't know, ride it for a little bit. We are up to 872 kilometers. We are only 127 kilometers away from the braking service and then this thing will be fully unlocked 
and it's not like it's locked at the moment but uh, I want to ride it a little bit gentler while it's still in its braking period and as it usually happens every time you take out something on two wheels on such a beautiful day we are going to be taking the long way home why well because we can why not <laughs> it's Saturday it's a weekend day why not have a little bit of fun and ride this thing about I have a full tank of gas I'm not gonna go very far but I want to take it a little bit out on the ring road so I can open it up just a little bit and get some speed going enjoy this beautiful day not just stuck in traffic but a little bit on the open road now this is where I think the Zontas absolutely shines compact enough that it, you can do this you can filter traffic and then once you are done with the city traffic aim for the open road close your visor lift your windscreen turn on your music open up the taps and we got 440 kilometers of range left in the tank the highway is ours we can go wherever we wish to go if we had time and money but uh, i have only a little bit of time so we are going to ride it just a little bit and then i'm gonna head back home but at least i can take the long way home that's the beauty almost there almost almost to the highway quickly now like i've said not as difficult as one may think to filter with this thing once you get used to the size and once you can judge the width that it requires to pass between cars it's actually quite easy to do and the balance of this, this thing you can ride it at two kilometers an hour with your feet up it's so easy to balance at low speed even with the passenger i did try it with the pillion on the back and it's very easy to balance it, uh, because of the long wheelbase it has some awesome stability and now onto the highway after we filter traffic we ran errands through the city i can easily cruise at 93 kilometers an hour it is actually a lot lower than it can cruise so we can uh, we can bump that number up those are rookie numbers come on we are on the highway after all after all there we go that's more like it 120 kilometers an hour cruising speed 6000 rpm engine is nice and relaxed we are nice and relaxed we are covered from the wind it's hard not to love this machine as an all-rounder sure it has its flaws it's not an off-road bike it's not an adventure bike it's not a true and true touring bike it's not a sport bike it's not a little city scooter but as a swiss army knife of vehicles of two-wheeled vehicles it's very very hard to fault with the low fuel consumption the pretty high cruising speed the comfort uh, the wind protection the balance the ease of use around the city and the filtering traffic as an all-rounder as a swiss army knife of motorcycles it's hard to fold this thing as an all-rounder and i think someone is over there on a dirt bike yeah boy get some on your little dirt bike <laughs> oh awesome some kid just enjoying his little dirt bike and we have a GTR undercutting us it's not like the left lane wasn't uh, free but yeah again welcome to Romania and that's enough enough highway for today because uh, I'm not going out of the city this is the last exit to go back to the city so um, yeah we're not going on any road trip today uh, so the open road will have to wait uh, just a little bit longer just a little bit longer but like I said I am not done with this thing I am not done with this machine just yet and uh, if you've made it this far into the video I think you're one of my top uh, top fans top watchers top members of the ride with Alex community and I and I thank you for being here so now that uh, some of you have left and only the top fans are have made it all the way to this video to this part of the video 
in case you are wondering I have been posting a couple of pictures with this scooter and uh, also just as an asterisk my feet are up and we are going this slow like I've said it's so easy to balance so uh, you've seen me posting a couple of pictures with this thing with the connected blue lights and everything and a lot of you have commented that they are so happy that I finally bought it no I have not like I've said I do not have the money to buy it right now uh, what I am going to do is uh, I'm gonna make my bosses an offer to basically pay it in the next couple of years like two and a half years or rather take the money out of my salary and uh, until it's fully paid off they can keep it as a test ride vehicle and uh, on the weekends I can take it and film with it and ride with it do whatever I want kind of like you know shared ownership of the vehicle now I'm working on a proposal uh, it's not uh, it hasn't been accepted yet actually I haven't even forward the proposal yet I've just talked to them as an idea and uh, they were quite okay with it so I'm uh, I'm hoping they will agree to this and uh, hopefully soon I'll be making a proper announcement about uh, this scooter which I have named but I am not going to tell you the name until uh, the deal is finalized because at the moment it's still not my scooter I still don't have an agreement in place we still haven't shaken hands on it and uh, I don't want to give too many details away until it's set in concrete until I know I can use this thing for whatever trip I want and uh, only then can I start planning some proper trips and some proper adventures with the little 350e until then my task is still to get it over its braking period we still have not 100 kilometers to go and that is exactly what I intend to do right around on the premises that I have to get it to a thousand kilometers oh with me what a hard job I have <laughs> I guess it's a hard life having to put kilometers on scooters you don't own just to get them over the braking period but you know what they say guys you know what they say somebody's gotta do it anyway I'm gonna slowly but surely be taking this thing back home and uh, I only have like 20 minutes to go home and the road is gets kind of boring from here because it's just the ring road of Bucharest so Thank you all so much for coming along on this little Saturday vlog. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed Bucharest and hope you're enjoying the content with the 350E. Hopefully more with it in the future, but details to be revealed in the future. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Until next time, take care out there and ride safe. Bye.